Okay, let's continue our discussion on the IDEs. And IDEs are integrated development environments, and we have various uh, IDEs available to us for free. But the ID that we are going to work on in this lecture and also along the course is called Visual Studio Code. What we have, so list of IDEs. You see, we have Eclipse, Microsoft Visual Studio, NetBeans, IntelliJ, PyCharm, Atom, and others. And you could be more familiar with one of these. So if you are, please stick to that environment. It is all the same. All the IDEs do the same, but with some features more or less. But if you don't have an IDE and you're not familiar with one, go and install this Visual Studio Code on your Kali Linux. So the first installation that we are going to do is through the download page on the visualstudio.com. So this is different from the Microsoft Visual Studio. This is called Visual Studio Code. As you see, Visual Studio Code is a free source editor, source code editor made by Microsoft for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. And features include support for debugging, syntax highlighting, and others. So let's continue to the download page. And we are going to have the download page momentarily. There's a note that I wanted to tell you on installing external packages. So we have three types of installations. One of the installations is through the installers, just like this. You get the RPM, you get deb, Windows installer, or especially in Linux, we have the deb in Kali Linux. And you go with the installation like dpkg-i and the dev file. So this is the first. And there's another installation, which is through the compilation of the source code. So you configure, you make, you make install. We are going to have some installations like this. But the best way, if available, is installation through the package manager. And I will show you the differences momentarily. But for now, just download this dev file. So if you click on it, you're going to have the package downloaded. But I've already downloaded the package, so I go for the installation. So let's launch our terminal. Run in Tmux. Go to the download. So dpkg, the command is dpkg-i and the package. But we need sudo because this is a super operation for us or need super privileges. So it unpacks the Debian file and set up the file. I mean, installs the files in relative path and everything will be ready momentarily. So this is the first installation method. We don't want to compile source code for now, which was the second method of installation packages, as I told you. But then I will remove this package and go through the package manager installation. So as you see, the package is installed. I can run vcode, vcode. So you see the Visual Studio Code package is up and running and we can use it. But I need to remove this package right now. So sudo dpkg-r and the package name is code. So let's go for the uninstallation process. And in the meantime, here search for Visual Studio Code uh, Kali Linux install. So we want to install it with Package Manager. And why? The why is when you install packages from the installers, like the dev files, or from you compile it from the source code. Both methods have a weakness, which is maintaining the packages, because you have to go and install another package, for example, after one month. You have to go and grab the updates manually. The most important feature of using package managers like APT is they will maintain and organize the updates for you. For example, whenever you run, so the installation is completed. So whenever you run sudo apt update and also sudo apt upgrade, the apt package manager will go through the whole packages that you have installed with your package manager. And this is a great way, an organized way to have all your packages and don't be worried about what is installed, what is at the latest version and so on and so forth. So you can just upgrade every package with this command. But when you install with that dev file, you don't have that power. So we want to install it using the package manager. Let's move forward. And this computing for gigs.com has a great article. So sudo apt update, which we done and the update process. So you see, I've ran sudo apt upgrade. You see, I need to get one gigabyte, near two gigabytes of archives and all my packages will be updated. So that is why I'm doing this. So sudo apt update, 
as the manual says. Should have to install these packages, curl, GPG, software properties. So let's run it. GPG is installed, the other packages, yeah, I want to install them. And we need to get the repository keys of VS Code, just like the Docker, as you remember on the previous lecture. And also just like Docker, we are going to add the repository of this uh, VS Code package. And whenever you call apt upgrade, it will ask this repository if there's any newer version and it will upgrade the package automatically. This is really great. So echo this, exit this part. So the packages are being installed and we have to go for apt update because we added to the repository. So let's run it again. Sudo apt. So control A double code just splits. Yeah, this is done. Control A M enables mouse mode. So clean this. Sudo apt update again to have the VS code updates. You see the Docker, the VS code are inside our hits and also the Kali Linux or Kali rolling repository. So all repositories are updated and we can go for the installation of sudo apt install code, sudo apt install code. So this is how you install it with the package manager. It is really simple. So you have to wait for this 64 megabytes to be done. So you see the download process is done and we are going for the installation and the installation is over. So we have our VS code installed via the package manager and we could get upgrades from now on on this really great IDE. So VS code, as you see, the installation was successful and we can start coding in Visual Studio code. But before that, I want to just install, so sudo apt install Python 3 because uh, we are going to need it and also Python 3 pip. Yes. So the download process should be done momentarily. Okay, the installation is done. And if I run it again, it says it's already the newest version. So we have Python 3 installed. You can print here, for example, hello world as your first program here. Control D exits. So let's move forward to the <coughs> Visual Studio code. So we can create a new file. We can type print. Let me zoom in. Zoom in. Yeah. Control plus sign will zoom in. So print double code. Hello world is the first thing that we write in every programming or scripting language. So in desktop, create a folder called, for example, a scripts. Always try to stay organized and put the name hello world.py. And as soon as you name the file.py, the VS Code asks you if you want to uh, have the recommended extension for Python. You say yes, and you go for the installation process. Okay, now the installation is done. As you see, the extension has about 29 million downloads. So it's a great extension. It has a lot of features and also some commands. All these modules are also working with this extension and we can use all that. So you see the print hello world. So I think you need a reload, so exit and run VS Code again. So VS Code. And we have everything up and running momentarily. We can run this script inside of Visual Studio Code. So right click, run Python file in terminal. So you see the hello world and it ran user bin Python 3, this address scripts hello world.py. So that's it everyone. We just wanted to have an IDE ready for the next lectures or next sections because in the CTF parts and also red teaming parts, we are going to have a lot of scripts going on. We will do all this with Visual Studio Code. So that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next lecture.